Over the last several years, I talked about on this channel how much I appreciate A24 because in my mind, they're one of the most exciting, experimental, and quite frankly, one of the most important movie studios that's working today. And I always make it a point to see as many A24 produced films as possible. Now, with that being said, I've seen my fair share of weird, wild, wacky, and amazing films from A24, but I can confidently say I've never seen a film quite like the one that we're talking about today. Now, is that a good thing, a bad thing? Should you see this film in theaters? Well, we'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler-free review of I Saw the TV Glow. But first, let me know in the comments if you've heard of this film and if you plan on checking it out. But of course, once you've seen it, let's talk about it. Share your thoughts of the story, the performances, the direction. Did you relate to the characters and or the story? Or were you left disappointed when you got done watching this film? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So to kick this conversation off, let's talk about who's behind making this very interesting film and what is it all about. This film is written and directed by Jane Shunbrunn and follows two lonely teens, Owen and Maddie, who bond over a late night 90s show and as time passes their obsession grows over this show as both characters view of reality begins to crack. Now there were some things that I really appreciated about the film and the actual filmmaking. One of those being the striking visuals that we see throughout this film that tell this very unorthodox story, but also the commitment to making you feel off balance while watching. Now, I couldn't help but to see the great influences of past works of great legends like David Lynch or shows that I would watch growing up in the 90s. And also thought the way that Jane infused her own creativity with those projects was very interesting. There's a very distinct tone and mood while watching this film and even though it could be challenging at points, I did find it to be effective in its way of making you feel as an audience as though you're with these characters going through these different phases or stages of loneliness as we see them struggling to find their identity. Now to take my appreciation for this film a step further, there were elements about this film that I actually loved. The soundtrack, the show within the film that we'll talk about here shortly, but also while watching this, there was just this feeling of relatability. Like I was able to relate to a lot of the stuff and the feelings that our characters we're going through. Now the soundtrack and even the use of music in this film is 100% a character within itself. Now I'm a fan of the group Radiohead and as I was watching this film I couldn't help but to make the correlation of feeling like I was listening to one of their albums while being completely immersed into the unknown of what's going to happen next within this story. Now earlier I said this film has a relatable factor to it, which I number one agree with because it takes place in the 90s, I'm a 90s kid, is a bit of nostalgia while watching it from the look of the film and things that they're tackling with in the first half of the movie. But I would also identify this film as a queer movie because it uses these allegories to describe what I consider a trans story. And when you see the film, you know I'm referring to because there's some transformation going on with our characters there. But with that being said, I don't identify as queer or trans, but I was able to who identify with its themes in these characters feeling as though the show that they're obsessed with and the characters felt so real that it was more possible for them to connect to them than their own reality. Now correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below but I think it's safe to say that we've all had an experience whether it's a movie or a show or a video game or a graphic novel or a comic book where we just obsess over it right and we have this feeling that we're so connected to the characters of the story that we would attach ourselves to it and maybe separate ourselves from our day-to-day -day lives. Now to me there is a distinct line between fiction and reality but I really enjoyed how this film played and handled the idea of these characters identifying with this TV show and feeling that they're the characters within the show but obviously this being the example of the extreme of our characters having the belief that these characters in the show is actually real. Now speaking of that show within this film while it's its own original thing in a sense you can see the shades of it basically being a mix of Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Charm meets Supernatural meets Twin Peaks and I was completely hooked by its premise and I found those scenes that we see within the show to be so different and unique and it has some of the creepiest moments of the entire film. Now I'll talk about it later but the show within this film which went by the name of The Peak Old Pank and like I said it reminded me of those shows that I watched as a kid in the 90s Buffy, Charm, Supernatural, Twin Peaks and it had like shades of Are You Afraid of the Dark very weird, very fascinating show within this film, and I'll talk about it later. I was just as interested in that show than I was the actual film. 
Now wrapping up my pros, I do think the director and writer Jane is really a director that has a great sense of uniqueness and feels original and singular in her vision. And while I have issues, which we'll talk about in a second, I love how she's willing to take risk and be an unorthodox. Now I also thought the performances from our main leads, Justin Smith as Owen and Bridget Lundy Payne as Mandy was solid. Their portrayals of the characters fit within the tone of the film and what it was going for. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. But before I get into my cons, I do want to say that I was generally enjoying this film, especially for the first half, as we're establishing this world, these characters' family life, their day-to-day -day lives, how they're obsessing over the show, and how they're using the show as an escape. But unfortunately, after a certain point, this film just wasn't working for me. Now, getting into my criticism, I do want to address some things that I saw online and also about the marketing aspect of this film. I'm seeing some people labeling this as a horror film and to each their own, but to me, I wouldn't label it as that. Now, while I agree with the horrors that come with fear of not knowing who you are or being afraid of expressing yourself, I can see that being scary or terrifying, but I don't think that's the horror that I think some people are phrasing it as. And I also believe that A24 has been guilty of doing this in the past with their trailers where they're framing their movies to reach a broader audience, but I don't want you all to think that this is like hereditary or traditional sense of a horror film. Yes, creepy, and it could be eerie, especially with the TV show, The Pink on Pink. I don't want you all to think that this is a straight up horror movie, at least in my personal opinion, but to now get a little bit deeper into my criticisms with this film. To me, there are so many different themes and ideas that just don't fully feel realized. There's a lot of leaving it up to your imagination or characters having limited screen time. For example, Owen's mom or Mandy's parents. To me, them being more involved would have benefited the story and exploring these different relationships. There's also quite a few times in this film that we do time jumps and one thing about that I feel like it made it a distracting experience but also their story that I feel like was left in between those times that I felt were very important that just weren't shown on screen. Now this is more of a nitpick but there's some fourth wall breaking in this film and I'm personally not a fan of that being a method of telling a story or it being a way that a character can express what's going on in their mind especially when they're looking at the camera so to me it's rarely a method that I enjoy and I wasn't a fan of how it was used in this film. But last points, the film loses steam in the third act for me and it really breaks under the pressure of what's real and what's not real in my opinion. And if I'm being honest, I just wasn't a fan of the actual ending, but also my issue with the lack of character development from where these characters begin to where they end, especially for a character like Owen. But one last thing, as I mentioned earlier, The Pink Opaque is such a fascinating, interesting, compelling show. And I just wish the film would have found a way to incorporate that show more into the main narrative because I'm being honest, is the show was more interesting than the film to me, especially at a certain point in the film. So I just wish there was more to explore with that world and incorporate things because like I said, the moon man and some of the dark weird imagery from that show was just so fascinating. I just wish we had more time there. So I appreciate the filmmaking. I appreciate what it was going for, but a lot of it didn't quite stick the landing for me. But with that being said, before I wrap this up and give you my final thoughts on my score, I want to take the time to thank you all for making to this point in the video if you enjoyed yourself so far do me a favor hit the like button as well as sharing your thoughts in the comments below and consider sticking around by subscribing to the channel overall i saw the tv glow is undoubtedly weird and strange and definitely creates an unsettling atmosphere and tone and it can be at points a fascinating exploration of discovering these characters search of identity and dealing with the fears of becoming their best selves to me there's such a relatability factor of being so attached to something that makes makes you feel like you're living your life through these fictional stories or characters and it made me have this sense of nostalgia to listening to Radiohead album while watching Twin Peaks meets Are You Afraid of the Dark. The first half was so compelling and the performances were engaging, but unfortunately it doesn't all come together once certain elements are revealed and I wasn't a fan of how it all ended. And even though I might have my issues with this film, I'm going to give I Saw the TV Glow a solid 3 out of 5. Now at the time of this recording, the film has a limited release in theaters, but will have a wide release in theaters on May 17th. So should you see it in theaters? I'm going to say this. I don't think this is going to be for everyone. I don't think this is for the wider audience, but if you were like me and you love A24 and you know to expect the unexpected and you like to experience new things and see different perspectives, then give it a shot in theaters. But if not, at least give it a chance on streaming because honestly, I would love to talk to you all about this film in the comments below. So again, thank you all for watching this video. Hope you all are staying safe. You all are awesome, and I'll catch you all on the next breakdown.